Hello, it's Celia. Um, a while back ago, I was tagged by the lovely Sue and Megan at the restricted section to do the, um, not the, the ruler of book tag. And I love this channel. And they are always, or almost always, uh, combining their book reviews with reviews of different beers. And I am a, uh, I would say I'm a beer lover. So I always get uh, new ideas for beers to try out as well as book recommendations. So that's a win-win for me. So I was uh, in fact planning on do this tag while I was drinking a beer. But yeah. It's Tuesday, I don't feel like drinking a beer at the moment. So I will try to insert a picture of me in Paris drinking my favorite beer of all times. Uh, it's a sour Weiss beer or a white wheat beer. This tag was created by Ariel Bisset and I will of course link both the channels down below. So, the questions. If you were the rulers of books, what book would you make everyone read? And um, I have chosen a book that it's kind of a funny story or maybe it tells something about me as a ruler because I read this book as a part of a book club online and we were reading the books from the thousand and one list and this book I think we read it like three years ago and I was the only one who really enjoyed the book everyone else was like didn't like it it was boring it was unfinished and yes it is unfinished but it's a reason for that and it's too flat. It was many many arguments for why they didn't like the book. But I really liked it and I think it's a book that it's important for people to read. So therefore I want everyone to read this book if I was the ruler of books. And that book is this one. It's, I have the Norwegian edition because when I read French books, I uh, tend to read it in Norwegian if it's available. Um, it has been translated to English as well. So, and I have some of her books in uh, English also. And this book is Sweet Princess by Irene Nemirovsky. And... I would like to tell you a little bit about this book and just to explain why I want I think it's important that many people are reading it and I have my notes so I have to uh, look at them. Irene Mirovsky was a very well-known French author in the 1930s. She wrote a lot of books with different themes and she wrote short stories and this book Sweet Frances was meant to be her masterwork and um, in this book she meant to, um, let me see, she met, want, wanted to go in depths of the human nature and how humans react to uh, war and to be put in extreme situations. This book was meant to be written in four parts, but she only managed to, to write two parts. She was arrested in the 1940s and was sent to Auschwitz and there she died. Um, so this book contains oh, two parts. The first part and I don't know what the part is called in English, so 
I have taken the freedom to just translate the Norwegian title and that's Storm in June. And it might be the same title in English, but I'm not sure. And Storm in June or tells about the German occupation of Paris and it takes place in the first few intense days of the occupation. And um, it's panic, the people are panicking, they are fleeing their apartments and their houses. And um, this is a book with a lot of characters. Uh, you don't get to know them all very well, but you get to know, th know them good enough, I think. All these characters are from different social um, classes. You have the rich ones, you have the poor ones, and you have them in between. And the book is written in episodes where, where she is focusing on one group of persons and then focus on another group of characters and then go back and then focus on the third part and we go back and forth through uh, the first part. And I like that because then you get to really see how the, the people of all these different social um, classes are reacting to this crisis. The one thing I liked the most was the way she was describing the upper social class. They who have the money and, and was used to have the ability to just pay their way out or they were like looking down at people in normal times. And she, she is so um, sharp and witty and almost sinister in her description of these people. She shows all the arrogance and all the hypocrisy and showing us that being of a well-known family doesn't make you a real good human when the crisis and the war hits you. And it's kind of a normal way to react, but it but it made so clear in this book because before the war, they were the one who were on one side helping the poor ones and at the same time putting themselves up on the pedestal and talking down to them. And now they are out on the on the road trying to survive and they're all equals so yeah i find that to be very fascinating and a very good observation of humankind uh, the next part in this book is called dolce and it's set i don't know a couple of months after the um, occupation the french has surrendered except the La Resistance and we are now in a village that has both French inhabitants and uh, young German soldiers and they are trying to make the world or their life um, go back to normal as normal as it can be in this war situation. And I found it to be very amazing how uh, Nemirovsky is managing to go behind the masks of the German soldiers. They're not just many German soldiers that have been occup occupying the country and being mean. She depicts them as humans and as young boys that aren't they are a part of this war because they are soldiers but they haven't chosen to be soldiers in this war they are young boys they don't know what they're doing here and they are just trying to survive so 
I find that Nebrowski in this book just managed to tell something about humankind and what we will do and when the crisis hits and some of us will do good things, some of us will do bad things and this book was, or the manuscript of this book was uh, locked inside the suitcase um, to the early 2000s I think. Her daughters didn't want to read it but then they decided to read it. It was released in 2004 in French and it was put on the book sold 1001 list. So yeah, so I think this is a very good book and I think it's an, an important book. It can be very unpleasant. It can hit hard to home. I have said it before, but I like books that are like this. So, Frances is the book I want, I want everyone to read if I was the ruler of book. Or ruler of books, I would say. So yeah. And she has written a lot of other books that, because I love this, I had to go out and buy everything. So, I haven't read them yet. But I have Le Bal. Which is a little collection of short stories that uh, revolves around daughters and mothers and their kind of not that healthy, not that healthy relationships. And yeah. I have, uh, I know I have to see if I can find the English title, but. This one, it's Fire in the Blood, and then we have David Golda, which was her most famous work before Sweet Frances, and it was her most famous book while she was alive. So, yeah, need to read that. And the last one is also a collection of stories, and that's Dimanche and other stories. And this is a um, is a Persephone uh, book and I have to show you the end papers. Pretty. <laughs> so yeah, I like Irene Rowski even though I just have read, I have just read one book by her and I have four other books to read. So yeah, next question. What would you abolish in book constructions? And um, I don't know if you can see it in the on the shelves behind me, but I am a fan of the paperbacks, and I really prefer them to the um, to the hardbacks. But it's one kind of paperback type that I really dislike. And that's the hard paperback. I don't know if that's the correct term, but like this book, this is the the art of asking by Amanda Palmer. The book is amazing, and it just fills you with so much warmth and creativity, and you just want to go out and make things. But it's. It's just very hard and you have to bend it open and it's and I don't care if the book gets uh, like destroyed or anything but it's just hard to pull open and you have to just use all your force to read it. Number three. What author would you commission to write you any book? And for this, I chose the, the author Benjamin Constable. He's a um, uh, British author. I'm not sure if he lives in Paris now, but he used to live in Paris. And 
I think four years ago, he wrote this book, The Three Lies of Tomomo Ishikawa, and it just blew me, blew me away. And part of it is, um, is taking place in Paris, and part of it is taking place in New York. And it's like this hunt for clues to find out what's happening to this Tomomo Ishikawa. And it's kind of meta as well, because he's using the same name. Uh, the main character's name is the name of the, of the author. And, but he is so accurate with all his descriptions of the city. In, uh, like Paris and uh, so I spent a summer walking around in Benjamin Constable the main character's footsteps uh, and got to know Paris from a whole other point of view not as a tourist but like a citizen and so that was so much fun and see if and it was so fun to just walking around and see if the clues that was left in this book could work in real life. And it did. So I want Benjamin Constable to write another book that in from Paris so I can be walking around next summer in Paris in the character's footsteps because it's the best way to discover a city. So, yeah, and if you haven't read this book, you should do. You should read it because number four, what book would you demote to the library basement to make room for new books? And to be honest, I'm not fan of just getting rid of books or hiding books because there are always someone that really enjoyed that book, and just to make the decision that. Those books are not worth to be reading. Feels kind of wrong to me. But <laughs> I have some books uh, anyway. And it's kind of mean because it's not one book. It's like a genre. And, and it's a widely popular genre. But I don't like it. And I... It's, it's those psychological thrillers that has been written post Gone Girl that I really dislike and I don't think it's just because they're poorly written I think some of them might be good but I am getting so sick of all the books that are written with twists just for the twists sake because if I know there are going to be a twist that I will never understand, I will be so suspicious to everything that's happening and then the whole story will be one, boring and two, predictable. Um, so they, they, they don't work for me. They work for a lot of people and I understand that. But... If I had to demote some books, I would have demoted them. What cover artist would you commission to make a mural? And I had chosen a combination of two. And it's funny because I did. I thought it would be a combination of three illustrate, illustrator, but it's only two. And it's and it's um, a combination of the books by. Uh, the uh, cover, art, cover art by Coralie Beckford-Smith who has made the um, lovely lovely covers for the um, this is the Penguin English Library but also for the Penguin Clothbound and it's like a print and it's little details and it's both pretty and whimsical and here we have The Monk by Matthew Lewis I need to read that and Moby Dick by Herman Melville I also need to read that so 
So it's a combination of her and uh, illustrations like this. And these are so much darker. It's like the coal painting, I think. And I have always loved these covers. And I just found out it's the same cover artist. And he is called Hans Jørgen Toming. And I think the combination with the dark and uh, grey and a little bit depressing style and the Corrie Beckford Smith style would be kind of neat. What character face would you put on a coin? And I have chosen Alberta from Alberta and Jacob by Cora Sandel. It's a Norwegian classic. And I have chosen her because of her dreams and creativity and her will to break free from the boundaries uh, the society has set for her as a woman at her time. Number seven. What book would you award the Rule of Books Prize 2016 to? And I will reward You Will Not Have My Hate by Antoine Lery. I will do a full book talk of this book as soon as I got my as soon as I get my English edition because yes, I have ordered the English edition as, as well so I can read some quotes and this book is just fantastic. And last but not least, who do you tag? And this tag was made, I think, in May. So most of you have probably done it already. But Monica, if you haven't done it, please do. And Valentina as well, if you haven't done it. I really want to hear your answers. Uh, Elizabeth, you need to do it. And Monse, if you haven't. And Didi. Yeah. I'll leave the links to all of them down below. And that was all from me today. Uh, I hope you have a nice evening. And I see you soon. Ha det.